So I'm thinking about consumable content the other day. I actually had kind of a, I don't want to say breakthrough idea, but you know what? It's an idea that I think could be valid. It came about this way. So I've said in the past that a lot of the content that I make is consumable content. It's stuff that people will look at. I make drawings, comics, and music. All things that people really aren't into paying for. People don't really think about paying for. It's just something you go check it out or you listen to. Now, I do a music podcast called the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. And one of the discussions that I always have with other musicians when I talk to them, because they always say, you know, Spotify only pays like a fraction of a cent for each play. And my argument, first of all, is that's more than you ever got before. People would listen to your stuff and you'd get nothing. So now at least if somebody checks out your stuff and they don't like it, if enough of them do it within a day, that accumulates. And you didn't have to do anything for it. And then it occurred to me, I post my comic every day on a platform called tapas.io. So tapas like the tapas are like small portions of food. But this is a comic app. The people that go there go there because they like to read web comics. Now they have an ad sharing program. So you get paid for the amount of ads that are viewed on your comic. What if I sent people who are just interested in web comics to my particular comic? I did that the other day. I started three days ago. And I've since gotten over 6,000 views of my comics. Now, from those 6,000 views, some of them liked them, some of them didn't, but they looked at it, and I got ad share for all those people looking at it. So basically, my suggestion is this. Do you draw things? There's an entire site out there that pays you for posting that. Just cute drawings of cartoony type things. It doesn't have to be a comic. I started a new comic that's based on phone drawings that I make, just one-off pictures that I draw on my phone. I started a new thing with that, and I've been posting one each day. So consumable content actually could bring in some passive income in the background. I haven't had to print anything. I haven't had to make any new products. So I'm on to something here. At least in my mind, I think I am. So while I'm excited about the fact that it's working, I'm still trying to kind of scale it. But uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just really excited about how something's actually kind of sending a lot of traffic and paying off a little bit. Yeah. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. So I've been talking about how I'm trying to create some sort of passive income with the things that I make. And one of the things that I've been looking into and actually trying out, print on demand stuff. So, so drawing things and just finding out what can you do with it. I signed up for the Amazon merch program, plus I've got my own sort of store where I can do print on demand stuff. And I've been trying out shirts and other ideas for books. And then one day on Instagram, I'm contacted by the guy I meet today. My name is Ben Walker Story, and I'm an illustrator and podcaster. Of course, first I checked out his profile and I really liked his stuff. He does kind of like monster movie things. And that's also the podcast that he does. It's called Cheap Chills. But he also has his own storefront on Amazon, which I've been trying to do. And for the life of me, I cannot figure it out. When I click to confirm my membership, it just keeps loading, loading, loading. It's been this way for like three months and I don't know why. I haven't heard anything back from them yet. But he has a store on Amazon. He actually did a design for a book cover that specifically is a notebook, but it's a print on demand book. It just has the lines inside and he drew little designs inside of each page and you can use it as a notebook. And I thought that was brilliant. Well, when I met him, he told me that that's a thing. People do that. So we talk a little bit more about how he's actually in the past year been doing print on demand things and much like myself doing it kind of incognito and has actually been making money doing this over the past year. So the timing for this was just right. Where are you located right now? So we're in the foothills of California, just above Sacramento. 
So we're out in the woods. Are you literally in the woods or are you just kind of saying figuratively it seems like you're out, you know, in between the two places? Or I mean, are you actually like... I'm literally surrounded by trees. Really? We just bought a house in Grass Valley. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, that's an old Victorian. We've always wanted to live in a Victorian. And uh, it's more of like a nice suburban downtown feel over there. It's very like old West Town. So we're going to be moving there in a couple weeks. Oh, wow. Cool. And is this through um, the the work that you do? Like, what do you do, actually? So the last year or so, I've been just focusing on merch by Amazon for mm-hmm. the most part. And, you know, I do my podcast, but that doesn't really directly make any money. No. except <laughs> I, I can say that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except that I can build an audience around it with my Instagram feed. And the Instagram actually started first, and I just started collecting audience, you know, through that and then... What would you call it? Just sort of the center of it all so that you have something to talk about with the T-shirts and the merch and stuff. Mm -hmm. You have like a reason to do it. Yeah. Then when you're on the podcast, you can talk about the merch, you know, like check out the new shirt or or, or whatever. But with with merch by Amazon, it's been like 95 percent basically anonymous work, stuff that you wouldn't realize was mine. Oh, okay. Because I've got basically an unlimited amount of slots to upload products. Oh, you bastard. I've only got like 10. <laughs> <laughs> so as if, if I can think of it and I can do it fairly quickly, I just put it up and see what happens. And a lot of it isn't really in the niche that people would expect to come from me. Really? Or, or it might come from like, you get a joke and then you grab some clip art that works with the joke and you just throw it up and see what happens. You know, so there's a lot of that stuff. There's like stuff that I've done with like templates I'll just buy templates and uh-huh. make a joke, make a joke around the template graphics or, you know, plug in my own ideas with these graphics that have already been made. So I'm trying to work around not having like an assistant or a virtual assistant right now still. So I'm kind of doing it my own way and trying to have my own like content as much as possible. Not worrying about like what's popular, what's popular phrases that are selling out there, right. you know. I found out about it, uh, what, two summers ago. So just about a year and a half ago almost. And just got obsessed with this is this is it. This is going to be something that's really going to work for me. Yeah. Before that, it was a lot of client work, and occasionally kind of spending a few months working in a house somewhere uh, in the Bay Area where things move fast and you don't stick around for one reason or another. You end up like getting laid off, or you just don't click with the employers and they they let you go. You know, I've had all of that happen. So once I started figuring out that these print-on-demand services are something where you really could exploit them and do, and do well, mm-hmm. I, w- I went for it. So it's it's it took almost like nine months just to get to the point where I could prove to myself and prove to my wife that, uh-huh. that this, this, this could really be something where you could really pay the mortgage with this. Running into you is very timely because yeah. you're literally explaining something that I just started exploring like a month or so ago, like the exact same scenario. Mainly most of my stuff is on my phone. I forget my sketchbook constantly, but I always have my phone with me. So I've learned to adapt over time with using my phone as my primary drawing tool. And so I'll have all this stuff, like I'll be sitting there and I draw some dumb thing or I whatever. I, I don't need to explain all that, but I'll have all these drawings. So I started putting phrases with them and creating shirts with them using Amazon setting up with the Amazon merch account and just kind of putting them out there and seeing what I can do with them. And and it's funny that I happened to meet you randomly on, on Instagram. And it was funny because you messaged me and I was, I had just gotten done looking at your stuff, your store on Amazon for the the podcast. That's awesome. That's really weird. I love when the, the vibes end up paralleling, you know, but that's another uh, good thing to talk about is, is the store is, is pretty new. I just got it up in time for Halloween and having a store is still pretty, I think it's fairly new on Amazon in general. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long they've offered that, but if you get an advertising account and so you can set up your own store, Mm -hmm. I enjoy having a little central branded spot for people to check out. Yeah. I was looking at your stuff there was something you did and when I asked you about it over messaging you said this isn't a new thing and it's the first time I ever saw it you created you used Amazon publishing to create notebooks 
And oh, yeah. Th- th- that was brilliant. I had no idea. And you're like, no, this is a thing. How, how did you discover that? And like, w- did you order one? Like, what's the quality like? Uh, I discovered it through the network that I've been slowly building of other Amazon merchers. I've been sort of comparing notes with other illustrators who are like me who got into merch to put their art on shirts. And so we'll kind of compare notes with what happens. And this guy wrote me and was like, I just listened to a podcast and this girl has like a thousand blank notebooks just where you just design the cover and you just basically have empty books. And she, and she makes like thousands of dollars a month off these. That's amazing. And I was like, that sounds really cool. <laughs> and I had done like print on demand books before where I had, you know, actually illustrated things and written little mini stories uh, but that was like 10 years ago. I hadn't done one with, with Amazon. So I checked into it and, and and it's definitely a thing that people are doing. And there's like face, just like merch. It's like sort of the bizarro world of, of Amazon merch where there's the same kind of people wanting to get passive income, but there, but people are like busting out 10 books a day. Maybe I did two because I'm an idiot and I wanted to have like, you did a lot. You drew the lines on them. (laughs) I drew the lines on them. Did you know that? (laughs) Yeah. You can preview the book. So I went into it and that's when I saw it and it was even more, I was like, Oh, he's printing the actual lined pages and you did like a little illustration on, on them. Yeah. So there's probably like 20 custom illustrations that I peppered through the whole book, (laughs) but I thought, I thought that would add value. And so far it doesn't seem to matter, but I just put out a video to promote it uh, mm-hmm. this morning, I made a little mini commercial on Instagram and oh. maybe that'll help at least with my audience. But as far as people finding it organically on Amazon, that hasn't happened yet. I think you got to remember to play to your own advantages mm-hmm. and, and what you can offer people. I tend to like be shy about what I could actually offer. Really? And when, and like want to go for the, like put the toe in the water first and be like, well, maybe I'll just do a blank one first and I'll just see how that, and I, I'm glad I did because you get the process, you figure out, you know, how to upload, what everything, oh, things are out of bounds and you need to fix the margins. I, I'm an illustrator. I can do nice line art. Why am I doing blank books? That's silly. So I, you know, looking around, people do the same print on demand thing for coloring books for grownups. It's hard. It's kind of hard to do the math on exactly how much money they make, but they probably make a thousand bucks a month mm-hmm. off of like a swear word coloring book. So that's my next project is a a coloring book. And I just want to keep kind of escalating what kind of projects I do with these print on demand books. I think I've spent so much time on t-shirts that were complete flops. (laughs) (laughs) I guess it's just, it's just like anything else. Like you think about like sports stars and in baseball players, Mm -hmm. basketball players, they, they miss a lot more than they hit. And it's the same way with merch by Amazon or, or, or any of these things, you're going to have more flops than you're going to have hits. But the hits keep you going and they keep building up and you have your own little you know, portfolio of hits. And that's why I got into this. I got into it with Redbubble like 10 years ago. And it was because I was doing screen printed t-shirts and I was going to like Comic-Con and you would spend, I'd probably spend like $700 on a run of t-shirts to take to Comic-Con and, and hope that enough of them sell to make it worthwhile. And, and I would make my money back and I'd make a lot of great contacts and do a lot of networking but I'd always end up with like those big bins that you get, uh, mm. those big Tupperware bins to put your T-shirts in. I I, there's, I still have a garage full of them. You just never quite end up making it like worth your while and getting caught up. At first, I was just putting up my designs that people said like, oh, my shirt wore out or my girlfriend threw it out or something. Can you send me a new one? Mm. And I didn't have any new screen printed ones in their size. So I'd say go to Redbubble and get it there. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of just sat dormant and sending me $12 a month for like, I don't know, seven years until I realized that people were actually making money with this stuff and I could really escalate it. And the other thing too, and this is why I kind of went with Amazon is the big thing is shipping and Amazon pretty much has the free shipping. Like that's, that's how they're going to win the game. So could you describe the origin of your style or what would you say is your forte? What do you like to do as far as illustrations? Right now, it's just all about drawing weird monsters with a sense of humor. Everything I've always done with my art has had sort of a weird PG-13, basically 
sense of humor that's kind of dark and goofy looking. It used to be like weird Western stuff for a while. I was doing like a lot of bears with guns <laughs> when I was doing the sprint, the screen printed stuff. But basically what happened was I, I worked for this monster magazine that will go nameless. <laughs> all right. <laughs> because it didn't work out with them at all. But I was very briefly, I started in like pretty low in the totem pole is very small company. And somehow I ended up like art director for like, a couple weeks. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to rehash all their merch, come up with a style guide, and I'm going to make like this whole line of clothing and merch and like kind of raise the taste levels with their look and feel of this stuff. And they're like, yeah, cool. Good idea. And they just hated everything that I came up with. <laughs> and then we just started butting, butting heads more and more. And it just got weird. And you know, anybody that's familiar with this company, I think would know that it's not just me. It's just like, it was, it was it's a weird place to, okay. to be. I'm glad that it didn't work out because I've got this style guide, like this look and feel of things that I want to make. And I'll just make my own brand and I'll have it look like this, this way that I want stuff to look, right? That's what I'm doing with the podcast and just trying to make... It was about B movies and and old horror movies, the podcast. And so I'm trying to turn it into being less about movies and more just about like maybe just talking about paranormal stuff in general. And what made you decide to start talking about the B movies? What was the decision to go like, hey, let's do this? It was from wanting to make the t-shirts first. I wanted to like make t-shirts of with monsters on them. Okay. <laughs> you know, that have this look and feel to them. I want them to like smell like old you know, magazines in an attic, you know, <laughs> I wish the t-shirts could come smelling like that. So have a reason for the merch. I'm like, first I was going to make a, a video show. I'm trying, I'm still trying, but I'm, I'm really not comfortable on camera. So I realized my wife is funnier than I am. Uh, she's just got an amazing, f funny take on things. And, and she's not familiar with any of this stuff. It reminds me of uh, The Stuff, the movie about the evil yogurt. From the 80s, there was like this evil yogurt coming out. Oh, The around. Stuff. The Stuff with, yeah. the, with the Bloom Brothers. Yes. You know, I would be like, hey, check this out. And I'd show her the trailer. And I'd be like, did you see this movie? Have you? She'd be like, no, I've never heard of this in my life. So from like from that to like John Carpenter's The Thing or... Yeah any of these movies she it just wasn't in her wheelhouse she was she grew up watching like grease too you know <laughs> so <laughs> it's worse oh so my it's God. just funny to get her take on this stuff mm -hmm. so that's when I, we made the show is i would just show her these trailers and get her take and, and okay and then we start riffing about whatever we wanted to talk about anyway that's that's kind of how it all came about the original idea was that i wanted to d talk about all these movies that are on amazon prime uh even before i got involved in you know working through them, I was just checking out all these movies. I'd have them playing while I was working on whatever art projects, right? There's just so many of these old, weird B movies and monster movies on Amazon. And I just wanted to like turn people onto them and talk about them. But me sitting in a chair and, and bringing up the stuff, Monster Club is boring. So I bailed on that idea. Do you work on the computer when you draw your stuff or are you drawing it by hand? Like, how are you actually setting this stuff up? 90% on the computer right now. Okay. I use Clip Studio, which used to be called Manga Studio. Oh, okay. And I love it so much that I'm kind of like an unofficial ambassador for them. And I have started recording tutorials for oh, Clip okay. Studio on how to how to draw a monster and make it a two-color t-shirt. Oh. My first That's my first one. And the only thing that's slowing me down is I still am not happy with the video of me like looking into the camera and talking. Yeah. But I've got everything. I got everything recorded with me working on it. But also, I I do love doing stuff with with ink just on paper, and it ends up being faster a lot of times. That book that you were asking about, the the Nightmare Journal. Yeah. The cover is just something I I just did waiting for brunch in my sketchbook. Nice. You know, <laughs> I just drew this this skull with a wax hand candle thing going over it. And uh, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. So then I made some T-shirts. And then I was like, you know what? It'll make a fine cover, too. So uh, paper is pretty fast, and I enjoy it. But Clip Studio is it's great for stuff that's a little more involved. 
because you can build up the roughs so much. Mm. I don't know how familiar you are with like sort of the illustration process of building up an underdrawing. You can do it with like layers of tracing paper if you're doing it sort of the old fashioned way or with light pencil. But the nice thing about doing it in Clip Studio is you can just use the layers. And I mean, of course you can do this in Photoshop too, but it's just the, the, that program is more set up for artists and the way things draw just looks better. And the whole reason to buy Clip Studio, if you draw it all on the computer, is the stabilization feature. Because if you're drawing in Photoshop, you lay down a stroke and it's going to be all jittery because you're using a Wacom tablet or whatever. Mm -hmm. And with Clip Studio, you can turn on the stabilization uh, and turn it up as much as you want. So if you turn it up really high, like to 100 or whatever, it'll just make like this perfectly smooth line. Like it would take, you know, going into Illustrator and right. using like the Bezier tools to do, you know. Yeah. Or you can turn it down really low and have more like a coffee jittery hand on purpose if you want but mm -hmm. that that alone is is totally worth it so do you have a studio that you work in or do you just do it from home i will have a studio to work from in a couple of weeks when we move to oh, no grass kidding. valley nice now that you have the podcast you have the shirts you have the themed and then saying shirts that you had mentioned before yeah uh, how do you, so how do you promote that stuff you said you were, you're not putting those under your actual name so clearly people oh, aren't just the, yeah. finding it by happenstance yeah the anonymous stuff and and to be honest like it doesn't feel great as an artist to do that but when you have a kid like you do what you got to do right um, it's no different hopefully... than having a job doing it for like say you know hey we have a contract with mcdonald's can you make hamburgers look good it's yeah you're gonna have to do that anyway it's it's weird because it is like that and it isn't because i still can do whatever i want whenever i want exactly and that's huge that's huge for me you know that's where i was butting heads with my you know last um, employer was the they weren't used to that illustrator freelance like schedule where you, as long as you got the work done, you should be fine. Yeah. Instead of ass you know? and seats at eight o'clock, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I just don't think you can do the work that way is to where you are supposed to be like on some school schedule. Right. Uh, as long as you get the work done, it should be fine. But that's what I need is to be able to work at night, work five o'clock in the morning if I want to. Yes. It's up to me. And then if I have an idea for some stupid shirt about like, I'll just throw one out there because it's not like an amazing, I'm not as guarded. I'm not as guarded as a lot of people, but I came up with one that said like, save the drama for your llama, you know, <laughs> which I'm sure other people have thought of that too. So I, gr I just grabbed some clip art of a llama and I think it's funnier when it's not for me. I think it's funnier when it's not cartoony clip art, when it's purposefully kind of old and, and lame looking. Uh -huh. I think, I think that's funny. So got kind of some lame old clip art of a llama, very like straight, put the block letters, save, save the drama for your llama. And then you put the keywords in and you sort of try to see if like, if anybody's, if you're raising alpacas or llamas, or if you're just a fan of llamas or a llama lover, uh, or if you don't want any drama in your life, this shirt is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. That's it. You just, you just write sort of the circumstances why somebody might want a shirt like that. Mm -hmm. And then if they type that in, hopefully your shirt will come up and be toward the top where they might actually, you know, buy it. And are you doing this directly on Amazon or are you using other channels? I mean, are you advertising like on Facebook advertising? Are you doing Google oh. AdWords? No, like I said, I, I don't know. I, I wish that I sort of had like a business manager who could like sort of help with that and like the social media. I just don't have time to huh. like really exploit the social media as much as I should be. I tried the Facebook ads and honestly, I probably just didn't know enough about like what niches would click for people. That is a tough when, one. It's once yeah. you figure it out, it's like, Oh, right. When you go for the obvious, the thing is, is like 10 million other people are going for that same obvious because they're just yeah. trying it out too. And it's like, so you're just competing for, the obvious right and i think when i was i was just coming up with dumb jokes that didn't mean anything to anybody <laughs> <laughs> so nothing wrong stupid. with that jesus that's I, half of the memes that are online <laughs> i paid for facebook ads for this shirt that had a character on it that clearly was a ripoff of mr bill awesome who's like surrounded by a bunch of envelopes and it says oh no bills <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole joke and it's like that's fine and i think if I think if somebody saw that shirt at like American Eagle Outfitters and they were old enough to be around in the 70s, mm -hmm. 
maybe they would buy it, but that doesn't resonate with anybody's lifestyle or their career or right. In order to be like a niche that works with this business model, you have to be addressing something that's very passionate for people that True. people like identify as their like life. On the other hand, I'll just come up with like spelling jokes or just dumb stuff. And you just put it up there and sometimes it sells. You're like, yes, dumb spelling <laughs> joke sold. For me, that would just be writing in general. I'd just write something and it would be misspelled. You know, I've got this sort of, I don't know, hopefully a year plan in my, in my head mostly and on Evernote. But it's about what I was saying, putting the toe in the water mm -hmm. uh, and then working your way up through minimally viable projects. And then hopefully each one that I do will be more complex, but also supporting the last thing. So that it's not out of, out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to do is have, you know, coloring books next. And then I'd like to get into doing animated content. And hopefully it would all still sort of support and, and make sense within the Cheap Chills brand. So, yeah, I've just been thinking about ways to uh, have animation where I don't necessarily have to, one, where I don't necessarily have to, like, hand animate everything because that's really slow. And I'm, I went to school for animation, but I'm not, like, at the level where that wouldn't take forever. So there's some new software that helps with that. But also just, like, I want to have, like, scenarios, but I don't want to try to write everything and try to write jokes and stuff is not really, I think I could get around that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm just trying to figure out ways to do, to do that right now too. But the point is Amazon, it has sort of a competition for YouTube now and you can put stuff up on YouTube and, and try to get that advertising revenue, but you can also now put stuff on Amazon Yeah, and it looks a little more legitimate. Like, I don't know, it's, it feels a little more like, impressive oh wow you can watch something on amazon prime and video on demand feature that they have now yes yeah i know mm -hmm. i just discovered that recently too <laughs> so i was just looking at what got me started on it was i was looking at my son's animations that he's obsessed with he's been watching blippy which is this little dude live action running around with a silly hat on mm -hmm. and he just yells whoa he doesn't say anything else much and there's nothing else to it. It's basically kind of YouTube. And then he was watching this animation of like ice cream dropping onto a cone and it would teach the kids like the colors of ice cream. Weird. And, and he, but he was obsessed with it and he kept, he's got his own device. He's almost two years old and he kept playing it over and over again. And I was like, how do these animations end up on this device? And how do, how much do they get paid? Is mm -hmm. Amazon like, commissioning this stuff and like paying them a flat fee or what is this stuff so i looked it up and i was like oh this is basically merch but mm -hmm. for video people are uploading stuff it gets approved unless there's some specific problem with it mm -hmm. and then you get paid whenever people bring it up and if they watch it all the way through you get paid that amount if they turn it off halfway through you get paid you know half that whatever it's like turning on the the gas meter basically mm -hmm. So I, it's hard to do the math and figure out how much people are actually making with this kind of stuff. But it's like with this baby stuff, they just keep watching it over and over again. So you're it's, kind of cheating your way into having a feature length movie. It's like the Teletubbies back in the day. My son used to watch that. And I swear, I'd be like, Is, isn't this the episode that was just on? No, it was the yeah. same one. It, but it was just there was no dialogue. They would randomly walk around. It would show something slowly moving that I'd be like, how long are they going to show the extension of that vacuum? It's, it's weird because for the first time in my life, I'm 45 and the first time in my life, the challenge is getting all the work that's on my own plate that I've assigned myself, getting it done. And at any time right now, I have 20 times more viable work that really should get done and and i know what it is for and how it would be implemented but you know i have 1 20th of that bandwidth to get it done but yeah that's the challenge is to to go ahead and try to get some help and get this stuff done that that is going to help with the podcast and the social media and the t-shirts and hopefully with books and animations I mentioned that I'm making Skillshare videos and I keep mentioning that 
on podcasts and stuff because it's motivation to get this stuff done. Yeah. Once we move, I think I'll be able to set up my studio and get that stuff done. Also, when I saw your content on Instagram, it reminded me of what I'm working on now, which is recording a second podcast for some reason. A cartoonist friend of mine that I've known for uh, probably 15 years, Paul Frederick, uh, he's out of North Carolina. You know, we compare notes often about what we're doing, going to Comic Con and stuff. And we realized a few months ago that we're both doing merch by Amazon and he's pretty new at it. So we've been comparing notes every day and talking about, you know, I've just been giving him a lot of help. Hmm. And I was like, you know what, this should be a podcast. Like we're, I'm going all over all this stuff all already anyway for you. Mm -hmm. What if we just like got on the, you know, Skype or whatever and recorded it. And that kind of launched us into, we can do that for each other, but also we can get guests and help them. That's really we cool. Get, we can get guests that maybe will help us figure things out that we're not as as good at, like SEOs and <laughs> advertising and that kind of stuff. You know, we're cartoonists. We don't – that stuff isn't easy for us. It's kind of mathy. Yeah. So we're calling it Dream Realizers with Paul and Ben. And, uh, yeah, that came from a conversation with our first guest who was a newbie at Merch, and we were helping her – realized the dream of of figuring out some passive income through her t-shirts she's like wow you guys are like helping me realize the dream and paul goes yeah we're, we're dream realizers <laughs> and like all three of us go that's the show that's the name of the show <laughs> I asked Ben before I posted this episode if the podcast that he mentioned is out yet, and it's not. But I know that he does want to do that. And he's very active in the Facebook group that he turned me on to for all of this print-on-demand and Kindle publishing stuff. So I think he'd actually be really good at explaining this. And again, I'm glad that I got a chance to meet him. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this show at AmericanBandito.com. The music for this episode is by my band, Lorenzo's Music, which you can listen to at lorenzosmusic.com or on Spotify and iTunes. You can just search for Lorenzo's Music. Next week, I talk to a guy that I've been internet friends with for possibly 10 years. I've created a cartoon for him, and he's a puppeteer. And he's got kind of a crazy life. But until then, so long. <laughs>